What's up guys and gals, Ristus Frogs here, and today we're just going to be talking about why Philion is wrong about Chris Bumstead, and basically at the same time saying why Derek and uh, Greg Doucette are right about him. So Philion, <clears throat> like usual, Philion for me has been more like entertainment value rather than like educational. Derek is way more educational, and then Greg Doucette's, like, somewhere in the middle. But I think he's dead wrong here about the uh, <clears throat> genetics of Chris Bumstead and the famous picture that people are like, oh, my God, there's no way that he was natural here. So the first thing, the first, Philion brings up very few actual arguments in his video. But one of his few arguments, rather than just saying he's not natural because he doesn't look natural, is this picture right here where he's, like, shitting on him, like, oh, for him being 16 and him either just barely lifting at that point, like, just getting started or possibly never even touching a weight yet in his life, he doesn't look that good. Now, objectively, sure, I guess I can get behind that. Yeah, he doesn't look extremely impressive here, but there's two problems with that argument, okay? This is Philion, back when he was Philion fit. Um, and this was after, I believe, a year or two of training. And not shitting on you, Philion, but he looks just as good, if not better, than you did after you had been lifting for two years. This was two years of work for you, and Chris's abs are way more shredded. Um, his bicep vein is actually showing, which shows a lower amount of body fat in the bicep vein. And then there's another thing that you have to take into consideration. Um, with this picture here, he has his arm in like a unflattering position. And also another thing to bring up here is that Philion's actually got not like a super hardcore tan going on here, but he's a lot darker than, than Chris Bumstead is. So if, if you're darker, it makes you look more shredded and more lean. That's why they put that shit onto uh, bodybuilders when they go on stage to make them look appear even more shredded and fit than they actually are even though they are already extremely shredded and fit but then there's another thing too he's got his arm like this now take a look at my arm when i go like that probably look like a do you even lift right okay now let me take my arm um turn towards the camera flex it now i probably you know, especially my delts here, I probably look like a dude that's sauce to the fucking gills, as opposed to this, you know, not flexing, even flexing, if I try to flex, like, as hard as I can, still probably not looking very impressive, so it's, it's an unflattering angle, this is probably when he hadn't even lifted yet, and he looks just as good as you did, Philion, after two years of lifting. Okay, so to be honest, that just destroys that first argument that he was making in general because you can't really say, oh, he doesn't look like he had very good genetics when he looks like he looks better than you after you had lifted for two years, which granted, you're an ectomorph and you have, Philion has good genetics to be strong, but he doesn't have good genetics for like getting bulky, you know, he just doesn't, and this is the picture that everybody's like, oh my god, Chris couldn't have been natural in this picture, okay, and the thing about it is, is that we're comparing this. This is Chris at 18, supposedly right before he hopped on some gear or something. He's holding a lot more fat 
he's holding a lot more fat, so things just look a lot more rounder. He's got good muscle insertions and stuff, so it makes him look a lot fucking bigger, and it's a favorable pose. He's got both of his arms out in front of him. He's got his chest puffed out in front of him. He's been playing volleyball or something, so he's got, like, a pump going. He's not just, like, sitting there like, hey, guys. I'm Chris before I even lifted, and my arm already looks as big as some people's when they've been lifting two years already, like, you know, and then you gotta consider that's him then, this is him now, this is him now, this, he's easily put on, I mean, it's night and freaking day, he looks like he's put on 30 or 40 pounds of muscle while simultaneously dropping down like 10% body fat. Like here, his body fat is way fucking higher. Um, every muscle on his fucking body is way fucking smaller, especially his legs too. I mean, his legs look very, very unfavorable here. Like I would say that my legs would blow his out of the fucking water. and. Probably my biceps, too, would blow his out of the fucking water here. And my delts. He's got a way fucking better chest than me. He's got way fucking better ab insertions than me, personally. But you gotta keep in mind, this is him after only lifting for two fucking years. And this is what he looks like. I've lifted my entire fucking life. Philion, I don't even know if he lifts anymore. Or if he basically just still talks about this stuff because it's, like, what got him his claim to fame, you know. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. But there is a law of diminishing returns, okay. It's not just, okay, I'm going to hop on 500 milligrams of test and then I'm going to put on this much muscle in, like, half a year. And then I'm going to hop on a thousand milligrams of test, and then I'm going to put on double that muscle. One, you're not going to put on double that muscle. And two, you might not even put on 1.5% of that muscle, or 1.5 times of that muscle. There's diminishing returns that come with everything. So it makes less sense that he was already juicing in this picture, and then he just upped the dose on everything and just because he's such a good genetic responder that he put on another 30 or 40 pounds. That doesn't make much sense to me. And another thing that doesn't make much sense is what, what does he have to gain from lying? He could have already juiced at this point, And just looking back at his 16 year old picture, you'd be able to say, yes, he has good genetics. Like look at people, look at people with bad genetics, average genetics, his picture at 16 is what a lot of people are going to look like with average or bad genetics after their first cycle, or they will never look that good their entire lives because they, one, won't be able to get that lean, two, won't be able to build up their muscles that much, three, they might have shitty insertions, and just there's some people that just are never even able to get abs for their entire lives. So I just, I don't like... Philion's uh, argument here. I like the guy, and I'm not trying to sit here and shit on him. He's way, Philion is way fucking stronger than me, okay? I think I have better genetics than Philion, but I'm not a fucking ectomorph, okay? I think that Philion actually could have gotten a great physique if he kept going, but it was like he went two years, and then he was like, uh, well, I'm still not looking that great, and it just seems like he fell off. And now he's like this bitter guy that sits there and shits all over people with good genetics and says, oh, this, this guy had to be sauce, that guy had to be sauce. I've never once seen Philion actually say about a good looking a dude that's put on a lot of muscle. I've never once heard him say, okay, I actually think this guy's natural. Every single person to him that looks even somewhat decent is unnatural. So I would like him to stop being as biased, but I think he's dead wrong about Sebum here. I agree with Greg and Derek. I mean, their credentials to me are much higher, and this is coming from somebody that just disagreed with Greg about Dylan McKnight. I don't think he was right about that. I don't always agree with these guys about everybody. I don't think they always consider everything, but I think Billion's dead wrong here. 
So just comment what you think below. Mrs. Sprox, take it easy.